The following is a presentation of the Heart to Heart Bible Study through the Gospel of John. More information about this study is available on our website at www.refugefamily.com. So I am excited about this study. I am so excited about the book of John. In fact, um, <clears throat> I have it further on in my notes that uh, a lot of other people apparently are very excited about the book of John as well. I was listening to Dave Rolfe on uh, Sunday morning, and they are starting this year going through the book, the Gospel of John. Um, um, who else is, um, the men's study is going through the book of John. They're already in chapter three. And uh, the re re response, the college group is going through John. So I think God must be saying something to us about this book. And there are some very interesting things in this, uh, in this gospel that we really need to pay attention to and dig into. So here we are opening up the introduction to the Gospel of John. Now, I have loved studying these book, this book. I have loved, as I have been reading through it, finding all of the things in here. I've been loving doing it. This Gospel is, of the four Gospels, the most evangelical. If I were to give a title to this study, which we normally do, but I was sick, so I didn't. Um, <laughs> I would title this simply Believe, because that's what the Gospel of John is. It is written so that you might believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord, that he would be glorified in your life. And so there are a lot of different things in this particular book. It's one of those, uh, it's one of those that most of us urge people when they are new believers. We say, if you're going to start your Bible reading, start in the Gospel of John. Why? Because it introduces us to who God is, to who Jesus is. Jesus the person and the fact that he is God and that he is the Savior of the world. We have um, in there... Um, it really tells us of Jesus. So this said, we find that Gospels John, <laughs> Gospels John is, we find here that the gospel, that, <laughs> I even have it written down. This is, okay, thank you for your patience. Um, that, you know that's what's going to be on my tombstone? Yeah. Construction ended. Thank you for your patience. Yes. That's what's going to be on there. Um, so that said, we find that John's gospel is very different from the other three, uh, from Matthew, Mark, and Luke. In the gospel of John, it omits the birth of Jesus, it omits the baptism, it omits his temptations, it says nothing of the Last Supper, it says nothing of Gethsemane, it says nothing of the Ascension, there are no accounts of people possessed by devils and evil spirits being set free. None of the parables are in the Gospel of John. None of those are there. And yes, John omits much of what the three Gospels tell us, but he tells us much that, we, that they don't mention. He talks to us about the marriage at Cana of Galilee in chapter 2. He speaks to us of Nicodemus coming to Jesus in chapter 3. He speaks to us of the Samaritan woman in chapter 4. The raising of Lazarus. 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 The raising of Lazarus in chapter 11. The way in which Jesus washed his disciples' feet. That's different. It is the way he washed his disciples' feet. 
in chapter 13. And Jesus' teaching about the Holy Spirit as the comforter, which is scattered throughout chapters 14 through 17. It's in John that some of the disciples really come alive because of that more detailed information. Thomas speaks for the first time in uh, chapter 11. Andrew becomes a real personality right here in chapter 1 that we'll go over next time and in several others. The character, we learn the character of Philip in chapter 6. We hear the protest of Judas at the anointing at Bethany in chapter 12, verses 4 and 5. And these little extra touches really reveal some stuff about these people. After reading John's depiction of Thomas and Andrew and Philip, the character of each man is so much um, written on us, we, we remember it so well because of the way that John explains it, the way that he puts it across. John adds extra details as well. He speaks of the loaves that the boy brought to Jesus were barley loaves. Specifically, they were barley loaves. That is going to make a difference in the way that it is all explained and understood. When Jesus came to the disciples as they crossed the lake in the storm, he says they rode between three and four miles. That's not in the other Gospels. It's a detail that was left out. There were six stone water pots at Cana of Galilee. He will tell us there were six water pots there. There were four soldiers gambling for his clothing, that seamless robe that he wore in chapter 19 um, as he died. He knows the exact weight of the myrrh and alice which were used to anoint the body of Jesus in chapter 19. He remembers how the perfume of the ointment filled the house of the anointing at Bethany. He talks about the fragrance of that anointing oil. That's a detail that's not in the other ones. This is spoken, uh, many of these seem like unimportant details, yet they give us the reality of the memories of a man. The memories. Last night, while I was studying, my husband, wanted to know where all of our pictures are. Could I get out all of our pictures? So while I was studying, I got out all of our pictures. Um, we have so many printed pictures, and um, so I, we got those all out, and he was sending them copies of them to all of the kids and to me, and, uh, w which is really a good reminder to him and others who save all of your things on your computer. Print some of those prints out. Print some of those pictures out because as we looked back on those things, those memories came alive. And so that's what we have in the book of uh, the Gospel of John here, those memories coming alive. Uh, he was a man who had been with Jesus over the course of three years. Now the other, uh, the other three disciples, or the other three um, Gospel writers, only talk about the time from um, John the Baptist. So they only talk about one year. But John will talk about three different Passovers. So we'll go into that, that, that following of him for three, um, for three years he had been with him. Yet we find that none of these memories are about John. John's name, as you know, is not in this book. There's nowhere in this book. He refers to the, the disciple that Jesus loved. He refers to himself in different ways, but his name is never mentioned. Why? Because this gospel is not about John. This gospel is about Jesus. It is all about Jesus. And I think that that's why everybody is teaching right now this particular book, because we are in a place, ladies, we are in a place in this country where we have people who want to take off, in God we trust, off of our money. We want to take off every mention of God. They want to take crosses out of everywhere, every sign that Jesus ever existed. We need to stand strong against that. 
And when we have opportunity, speak the name of Jesus. Or when we have the opportunity, print the name of Jesus. Make it known to the people. Because now more than ever, this world needs Jesus. Now more than ever. And it doesn't have to do with our president. It has to do with the day that we live in. And this world needs Jesus, and we want to serve Jesus in a contagious way. We want people to look at how we serve Jesus and want to be just like us. And that's okay, because then we direct them, oh, it's not me, it's God. It's God that's done it in me. And so, <clears throat> because it is at the name of Jesus that every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. For there is no other name under heaven whereby men must be saved but the name Christ Jesus, it says in Acts 4.12. And so John spoke with detailed knowledge of Israel and of Jerusalem because most of the time that he spent with Jesus was uh, spent there in Jerusalem. Remember that Jerusalem was destroyed in uh, 70 A.D., and John did not write his book until approximately 90 or 100 A.D. And so this is 30 years later, and the memory, and yet the memory of which he speaks from, he, he knows Jerusalem like the back of his hand. He'll speak of areas that if you ever get a chance to go to Israel, these kinds of things really come alive to you. But this man spoke as so familiar with all of this. He speaks almost entirely of the activity of Jesus in Jerusalem. Why did John treat the facts like he did? As I said, this gospel was written around AD 100. It was, he was living in Ephesus, where he would later be exiled to the island of Patmos. And uh, he actually is the only disciple that died from old age. Although they tried to bring him down, Although they tried to kill him in various ways, they couldn't bring him down because God knows the number of our days. God knows the number of our days. Um, <clears throat> by the time of his writing, uh, there had emerged some situations in the Christian church. That being said, uh, our first Christianity had gone out into the Gentile world. The church was no longer mostly Jewish. At the time that Matthew, Mark, and Luke wrote their gospel, that Christianity was still mostly Jewish. But now, 30 years later, it is mostly Gentile. And so it has to be expressed in a different way. Um, uh, Christianity, so Christianity had to be restated. It's not that the truth of Christianity had to change. It's not the truth of Christianity that changes, but it is the way that it's expressed changes. And so the genealogies of the other Gospels weren't necessary, but the understanding of the word, the logos, that, that word logos meaning reality, they understood that. The Greeks understood that. They understood what was being talked about when it said, he became the word, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. They knew exactly what he was talking about. They understood that. And so we'll get into that as we get into chapter 1. Um, uh, so John's purpose in writing was that his readers might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing they may have life in his name. That will be in chapter 20, verse 31. And John specifically tells us in this verse that his gospel is evangelistic. He tells us what the work of God is in our lives in John 6, 19, uh, 29. This is the work of God that you believe in him who sent, whom he sent. That you would believe in God, that you would believe in Jesus Christ whom God had sent. You've seen the little pocket gospels of John given out to new believers, old and young alike. I still have one in my purse. I read it often. I love, like I said, the gospel of John. This gospel is loved by Christians that are young and the more seasoned ones as well. And I think we're more seasoned because of 
this gospel of John. John doesn't merely give us the facts of the life of Jesus, but he gives us long discourses. He gives us long reflections of what actually happened. You'll see that the chapters are very long. That's why you're going to do some of uh, those chapters, uh, some of those lessons together so that we can get through it. Uh, This is the John who tradition tells us would be brought in on a stretcher at uh, close to the end of his life. He would be brought into a group at the end of his life on a stretcher and to speak to the Christians that were there. And he would get up on one elbow and he would say, um, he would say, (laughs) little children, love one another. Love one another. And then he was done. That was his whole speaking. Just love one another. Love one another as Jesus Christ has loved us. His gospel contains the best known verse in the New Testament. You all know it, don't you? You all know John 3.16. That's part of your homework, memorization of John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And I can tell that some of you have learned it in the old King James like me. Some of you have learned it in new King James. Some of you have learned it in the living. Some of you have learned it in the different translations. It all says the same things, and you have it memorized, and that's fantastic. If John's book was the only book in the New Testament, it would have everything in it to feed us. If it were the only book There's enough there for a lifetime of study, and we only have 16 weeks to go over it. So we we actually have those three verses for this coming week. Uh, The first one is what we spoke of, John 3.16, and then there are, in in our first time together, it's going to be the whole chapter of, um, the whole chapter one. So you're going to be doing two lessons that cover verses 1 through 51. Okay, and that is on your schedule, so it should be clear as mud. So, so we'll be covering that first. Just, and just remember that as you read through it, pray first. Ask the Lord to give you what you're supposed to get from this. Let him speak to you. Invest a lot of time in listening. And trust the Lord to give you this. And remember this, God loves you. Love him back. Okay? Lord Jesus, I thank you, Father, for our time together. Lord, I pray, Father, that you would just cause us, Father, to um, to just sit at your feet and to realize what a privilege we have in belonging to you, Lord. We don't want to spend a, a moment, a second without you in any areas of bitterness or anger or, or whatever it is, Lord, that's in us that uh, keeps us from walking closely with you, Lord. I pray, Father, that you would just fill us with all that you have for us today, Lord. Help us to submit to your guidance and to trust you, lean, to, lean on you with all of our heart. I thank you, Father, and Lord, as the ladies get into their groups and get to know each other, I pray that you would bless their time together and that you would be glorified, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. a presentation of the Heart to Heart Women's Ministry at Refuge Calvary Chapel, Huntington Beach. For more information about this ministry, please visit refugefamily.com or call 714-891-9495.